Hey everybody and good morning. Today I'm going to be talking about being stuck in your birth business. What it is, why it happens, and um, some tips on what you can do to help you go out there and get unstuck. So before I begin, I'm going to um, um, take turn the other way and um, share this with my Facebook group. But in the meantime, if you can see and hear me, um, I'd love for you to just um, say so in the comments and I'll be right back. Alrighty, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Darlene McCauley and I help birth professionals start and grow their businesses with an emphasis on establishing systems and creating communities, both on and offline. Um, so before I get into today's topic, I'd like to ask you a question first. Wherever you are in your birth business, whether you're just starting out or you've been working on growing your business for a little while, um, I'm curious to know whether you are currently struggling or have struggled with the, um, a lack of confidence or moments of doubt that are so strong that maybe you freeze or you're tempted to run the other way, and basically you're just not meeting your goals of getting out there um, and and doing what you really want to do, um, which is serve people. Maybe you've tried positive affirmations or vision boarding, um, sought out support in an online group, um, talked about it with um, a buddy of yours or mentor. Uh, maybe you decide that um, investing in another workshop or a training certification is just the thing that you need to give you that confidence so that you can really grow your business. Um, if this is you, um, I want to know, so go ahead and put that in the comments. Um, and, and secondly, I want to assure you that I'll be giving you some tips to help you break through that so that you can go ahead and put yourself out there. So. Um, if you know of any other birth pros that might benefit from today's topic, please go ahead and share this. Um, I'd really appreciate it. And at the end of the live stream, I'm going to invite you to sign up for the Savvy Doula Free Resource Library. Um, it has um, several different freebies and I have just added in an additional one. Um, um, with some exercises to help you process some of the things that I'm um, talking about today. Um, hi, Kim. Yes, it's a near constant struggle, something that I deal with too. Um, so I'll give you more details later on the, on the freebie that I've got, but for now, let's get started. So I've been coming across this running theme over the last month or so with coaching clients, um, my, some of my blog students, and I've been going through this myself. And that theme is an overwhelming feeling of resistance when trying something new in your business. Uh, what's interesting to me is that I've found that this typically happens um, when someone is wanting to become more visible and, um, and they want to be seen um, and putting themselves out there. So, for example, one can feel some resistance about launching a new website or starting their Facebook page. It can be about starting a new blog or reaching out to other people in your community, um, putting up a table at a baby fair, or in my case, it's actually going live on Facebook. Um, so today, I'm gonna talk about what being stuck or feeling resistance looks like, uh, why it happens, and what you can do about it. So let's talk about this feeling of being stuck. What does resistance even look like? Well, there's the obvious feeling um, of that physical pushback um, that you feel, such as when you're about to push the button to go um, to turn on your website, or um, or something's telling you, you know, no, don't make that phone call yet. Um, and it could also be, you know 
that cacophony of voices in your head screaming, no, don't do it, don't do it. Um, saying things like you're not good enough or you're not ready. Um, and then there are the more subtle defense mechanisms that happen, such as doing anything that basically lets you procrastinate and not deal with, with this goal that you've put forth. Um, it can look like getting lost in social media, tending to everything on your ever-growing to-do list except the goal that you've got, um, signing up for another training workshop, saying yes to responsibilities um, in your personal life or, or, or your business that have nothing to do with, um, with the goals that you're setting, um, staying up late, playing video games on your phone. I do that sometimes. Um, declining invitations to do the said thing that you're trying to avoid. Um, doing research, all the research. I over-research everything. Um, or making a list of all the things that have to happen before, be, before you can do whatever it is because you want it to be just perfect. So does that sound familiar to you? Um, this happened most recently for me with my irrational fear of going live on Facebook. Last year, I did go live a few times because I was part of a coaching program and it was part of the, part of the program to do these exercises. So I went live and it was okay. And then I signed up for another program and they also encouraged going live, but I made all these excuses for all the reasons why I wasn't ready yet. Um, and then I proceeded to do almost everything on the list that I just gave you. So if you're in this place now, I'd love to hear what exactly has you stuck and what activities you might be partaking in to avoid actually doing this. Um, and yes, I do want you to admit that you're, that you're not stepping into your role and, and avoiding what it is that, um, that you wanna do to move your business forward. So before I tell you what I did to get over it, let's go ahead and try to understand why the heck we do this to ourselves. So simply put, our brain wants to keep us safe. The status quo is comfortable. Uh, we always know what to expect. And for the most part, we just go with the flow and we move smoothly through life. But when we're starting a new business and every single time you try to up level, every time you try to uh, widen your circle of influence, um, those, that, that resistance can, can really crop up. And our mind reacts with the red lights and the loud buzzers. And if you're like me, I've got like these jumping monkeys in the background and they're screeching, eek, 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 don't do it. And our minds are saying, what? What is this you want to do? You want to actually meet new people? You want to share a unique idea that's different than what everybody else is talking about? You want to ask for how much money? You want to go on camera? So these are the things that happen in our head. And every time one part of us wants to grow, another part of our mind wants to protect us from disappointment, from rejection, from ridicule, and from the unknown and even all the awful reactions that might have been stored in our memories from the past. So to stop that discomfort, we get our minds and our bodies doing other things. We make excuses and we do whatever it takes to stay safe. Um, are you in that place? And if you are, how's that working for you? Are you reaching the goals that you're setting for yourself? And if you're sick of being stuck, I do have some tips for you. So the worst thing that you can do when you're stuck is jump on that mental hamster wheel um, and listen to that never ending chaos that's inside your head. Your brain was on the right track when it wanted to keep you busy um, and substituted all those activities, but all that's really doing is just keeping you in the very same place you're in and getting you exhausted through all the busy work and, and the time that's wasted. And you want to take action, but you want to take a different kind of action. Um, some people are able to get past all that resistance and just plow forward and do what it is they have to do. 
and if that's if if that's you that that's awesome um, and it can work but sometimes if you don't address the root issues the next time and the next time you try to do something new the resistance might grow even stronger so what I am suggesting is that you take some action to work on your mindset and I'll go over some of these ways right now so before I even give some practical tips, I think this one thing is super, super important, and that is knowing your why. Why are you in business? What is your mission? Who are you here to serve? If you understand those kinds of things, it can really help you to, to um, in these times of, of frustration and resistance, to look back on, on this, knowing why it is you want to do this work and that can oftentimes really help to push you over the edge to get you to take some action so knowing your why um, and I'll tell you a little bit of my story so when I had this idea about 10 years ago about helping birth professionals with their business um, my bigger why was being able to reach even more families than was possible than if I were to just continue doing birth work. Um, and every time I contemplated shutting down um, Inspired Birth Pro, uh, my business, it would never fail that I'd go ahead and make a sale or someone would email me and thank me for the resources. And it just brought me back and reminded me of the bigger picture and the reason why I chose to do this work. And the, with the end goal of just being to help, help as many families as I could. So if I can help birth professionals grow their businesses and, and create a good livelihood, um, then they're going to be able to do what they love, which is help families. Um, so that's a really big reason that I'm all for knowing what your bigger why is. The second thing is um, getting some mind and body support. So when we're stressed out and we're avoiding um, growth in our business, one thing that's usually happening is that our brain is playing tricks on us and bringing up insecurities or you know just stressing us out. Um, and there's usually a voice that's trying to keep you safe um, by playing on your fear. Um, and it's gonna be the loudest voice in your head. Um, but the only way to be able to hear your calm, wise, rational voice um, and get a renewed perspective is to get your gremlins or monkeys or whatever is screaming at you to calm the heck down. So how, how are you going to do that? Um, so let's talk about self-care. What do you need most to feel calm? Do you need to move your body? Um, do you need to feed yourself nourishing foods? Um, get some body work done? Maybe meditate? Um, if you can let yourself forget uh, all this resistance that you're feeling and take some time to take care of you, then that calm, rational voice can make its way through and really start encouraging you and reminding you what it is you're doing and, um, and help you get over this hump. Um, for me, something that works extremely well is, is um, a technique called Emotional Freedom Techniques or EFT and you can go ahead and Google it um, to learn more about what it's about but basically EFT is about focusing on a topic that's um, th that's stressful for you or or bringing up really strong feelings usually negative feelings and using some um, acupressure points on your face and your upper torso and speaking some affirmations while you're tapping in order to help diffuse um, the strong emotions and what it can do is just help you um, feel more detached um, and even though your head is going off with with all that noise um, you're better able to um, to look at it in a more detached way and you can actually tell yourself okay you know thank you monkeys for your your concern and wanting me to feel safe but I'm okay and I'm gonna do this so um, 
in the days that that led up to doing my first Facebook Live um, this year, which was last week, um, I did EFT before bed um, for maybe about three or four nights just to help to calm myself down. And it helped. Um, okay, so doing some mind-body work, whatever it is that, that works for you, that, that helps you to be able to relax is going to be really helpful for you. Um, the next thing is journaling. Now, writing out your feelings can help face your fears and resistance. And freeform journaling is great, but what I really like to do is to actually have um, guided journal um, prompts that, that, that I can use to help kind of guide me through my thought processes. Um, for example, last uh, or a week and a half ago when I was feeling really overwhelmed, um, and this was actually not about Facebook, but um, I was feeling overwhelmed because things are kind of picking up in my business and um, I was starting to get stressed out that I wasn't going to be able to handle it um, and and that the growth was going to be too much for, for me to take. And so... Um, one of my one of my coaches um, one of my coaches gave me some journaling questions and being able to to do those really helped me to be able to um, write out all of my fears but then also kind of flip it around and write all the good things and the positive aspects about doing um, the work and and helping me to be able to face the growth and what was going on. So, you know, those monkeys can keep screeching when you're um, answering those journal prompts. Uh, I, I'm sorry, they, they, they can't keep screeching while you're doing those journal prompts because you're able to go deeper into your head and um, get some deeper insights and inspiration um, to help you move forward. Um, the next thing that you can do is work with an accountability partner or, um, or some kind of a support system. Um, an accountability partner can be your, your life partner, it can be a best friend, it can be a fellow birth professional, um, whoever, whoever it is that can help to, um, you can exchange goals and kind of help each other to move forward together. Um, or a supportive, um, a support system like a Facebook group or, um, or a mastermind or a coaching group, something like that where you have a hive mind of people who are rooting for you and who can encourage you and help to be that voice to, um, to encourage you to move forward. Um, but when you're asking for help, I want you to do it in a specific way. And that is, instead of asking how to do something, I want to challenge you to make an announcement um, of what you're going to do next. So basically setting a goal, saying that I am going to, um, write my first blog and I'm going to publish it tomorrow um, and and let people know because when you announce something publicly you're gonna have that internal pressure a little bit to to follow through um, and back to when I uh, was gonna go live a couple of weeks ago or last week um, a few days before that my coach asked me um, in our Facebook group, so when are you gonna go live? And I thought about it and I said, okay, this is the time. And I set a date and a time and a plan of what I was gonna do. Um, and it was great to get encouragement back from the group, um, to have them root me on and say, you can do this, it's, it's awesome, you're, you're, you're gonna do great. Um, and that really helped me to keep that commitment and, and go live last week. So the last tip I have is that you've got to take action. And let's face it, all the EFT, journaling, and asking for support, all of that is not going to do diddly squat if you don't actually take action. Um, and 
as an example, so last week I planned to go live at 11 a.m. Um, last week, Tuesday. Um, I had not sent out an email announcement like I thought I would. Um, and I woke up and my brain was in overdrive telling me, no, just wait until next week. You're not ready. You can put it off for just a little while longer. Tell me all the reasons why that I shouldn't go live. And then another thought popped in my head, and that was the voice of my coach And um, when, when she asked me to commit to going live. And what she said was, just let it be messy. People want to know the information. They want to hear what you have to say. And it doesn't matter if you don't have all the right tools or, or you mess up or your background sucks or whatever it is. Just go ahead, let it be messy and just do it. And in that moment, I committed to not being perfect, to letting it be messy. And at 9.50, I jumped into my free Facebook community and announced that, okay guys, before I chicken out, I'm gonna go live on my Facebook page. And those monkeys screeched loud and proud for the next nine minutes, and then I went live. And afterwards, I told my coaching group, guess what guys, I did not die, I made it. And as, you, as it usually happens when I'm really afraid to do something new, that I procrastinate for months on end, the moment I jump in and do it, when I look back at the other side, when, once I'm on the other side, I'm like, you know what, that really wasn't that bad. And then it's good. And then I can continue to do whatever it was that I, that, that I had done which is why I'm here today. Um, so anyways, if you are stuck right now and you're having a really hard time moving forward in your business um, because you've built up this huge wall of resistance, um, I encourage you to try these five tips. Some people are really great at just being able to plow through and, and go ahead and do the thing. And if that's you, then that's awesome. But for a lot of them, a lot of us, uh, we need to have some additional tools to help us with our mindset. Um, so try these out and seek out other ways that you can get support so that you can take action. Um, I really believe that the biggest obstacle small business owners face is their mindset because it's always trying to set limits. Um, and the only way that we can grow um, and bust through these boundaries is you know we're we're, we're always going to we're always going to be growing no matter how long you you're in business you're always going to learn new things you're always going to want to reach new people and having a toolkit to be able to help us through the rough patches um and support us and remind us of what we're here to do and um and then that future reward of getting that feedback from our clients who tell us that they had a wonderful birth experience or that the blog post that we wrote really changed their, um, changed their lives. It's, it, it's going to make all the difference. So if you're currently feeling resistance in your business, um, I want you to type in to the comments one action that you're going to commit today to taking to help you get a little bit further um, in meeting your goals. Um, and that's all I got today. Um, I have created a journaling worksheet uh, with some of the questions that I um, used myself um, to help me get through my little rough patch of not wanting to go live or my long rough patch of not wanting to go live. Um, and I've put it in the Savvy Doula Resource Library. If you already have access to it, all you have to do is log on and it's um, one of the lessons in the module. And I'll go ahead and put that link in the, um, in the comments. And if you um, are not um, signed up and you want an all access pass to the library, I will put that link um, up in the description. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, I hope this was helpful to you. And if you 
found some value out of it and want to share it with other birth professionals who you think might also be struggling, um, I, um, I'd really appreciate it. Um, and Gayla says that, um, I'm going to commit to making three con contracts per week, contacts per week. Awesome. That is fantastic. And, um, yeah, just, you know, hop into the group. And if you need some support, just come and ask. Uh, we're, we're here to help you. Um, all right. So if you catch this on the replay, um, thanks for sticking around. And I appreciate you um, who have turned up live. And I will see you next week. Bye.